In lesson 15, we're going to take a look at congruence for quadrilaterals and investigate how congruence for quadrilaterals is similar to and different from the congruence for triangles that we've been looking at. So go ahead and um, jot down some things for a parallelogram that um, you know must be true, given that it's a parallelogram, could possibly be true, and what can definitely not be true. So take some time to think about those three things for a parallelogram, and then you can come back to the video. All right, so let's take a look at a couple of things first that must be true. So we know that opposite sides of a um, parallelogram are always parallel. So we definitely know that AB is parallel to DC and that AD is parallel to BC. We also know that opposite sides of the parallelogram have to be congruent, so we know AD is congruent to um, BC and AB is congruent to DC. We also know that opposite angles are congruent, so we know that A is congruent to C and we know that D is congruent to B. Um, because these two lines are, because the opposite sides are parallel, we actually get that angles next to each other will have to be supplementary due to um, the fact of these being parallel lines. So if we have parallel lines here, then these two angles next to each other would be 180 on those parallel lines. Similarly, um, we've got over here as well, D and C would have to be parallel to each other if we then, or sorry, um, supplementary to each other, if we took these two lines and this one as the transversal, you'd have supplementary and then supplementary here as well. So all of the angles next to each other are supplementary or total 180, that happens all the time. And then we also know that the diagonals bisect each other. So if we were to put the diagonals in here, we would get diagonals that are bisecting each other. So BD would bisect AC, meaning AC is gonna be split into two congruent pieces and AC is bisecting BD. So BD is being split into two congruent pieces. Then some things that we know about um, what could possibly be true. So some, some things that could possibly be true, um, maybe the angles next to each other are equal. So maybe your um, like A and B, maybe your consecutive angles are equal to each other. They don't have to be, but they could be. So angle A might be equal to angle B or B equal to C or C equal to D and so on. That could happen. Um, maybe AB is instead of just parallel, maybe the lines are perpendicular to each other. So maybe AB is perpendicular to BC or BC perpendicular to CD or CD perpendicular to AD. Maybe two of the lines next to each other are perpendicular. Um, and maybe consecutive sides are congruent. So maybe instead of just opposite sides being congruent, maybe AB is equal to BC. Okay, or sides next to each other are maybe congruent. Um, which means it could be you know, you could say maybe it's a square. Okay, maybe it's a rectangle if those angles are all 90 degree angles. Um, maybe, you know, it's a rhombus with these angles being equal. You know, you could say maybe they're equal to 90 degrees potentially. Um, and then what are some things that definitely cannot be true? in a parallelogram. Okay, so what things absolutely cannot be true? Well, because these lines are parallel, that means that AB cannot touch or intersect its opposite side. So AB cannot ever touch or intersect CD. That cannot happen. And similarly, AD can't touch BC. Or sorry, AD. So similarly, AD wouldn't be able to intersect um, BC. So certainly that can't happen. Um, it's not going to be a pentagon or any other shape. It's got four sides. So it's definitely not 
um, a triangle, not a pentagon, replace with any other shape that's not a quadrilateral. Okay, can't be that. All right, then let's take a look at 15.2 um, here. So investigating some criteria for parallelograms to be congruent. So this says, Jay is learning about triangle congruence theorems of side, 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 angle, side, angle, side, angle, side. And she wonders if there's theorems like this for parallelograms. So her first wondering is if two parallelograms have all four pairs of corresponding sides congruent, do the parallelograms have to be congruent? So if so, explain your reasoning. If not, show me a counterexample. Okay, so given a parallelogram, all four pairs of sides are congruent in these two parallelograms. Do they have to be the exact same parallelogram? So go ahead, think about that, and then come back to the video. Okay, so if we take a look at a couple of these, so this just says that we have to have four pairs of corresponding sides congruent. So I've got a couple examples here to show you that this doesn't work. So this first set is actually two, two rhombuses or two rhombi. So they have all of their sides congruent. Um, and if you wanna see that they're actually congruent here, I can show you. So if I just open it here, um, okay, same length there, same length there, whoops. And then if I move it over to this other one, we can see that these sides are that same length as well. Okay, so that one and that one. And then we know we don't have to check the opposite sides because it's a parallelogram, so opposite sides are definitely congruent as well. So in this first one, we have two rhombi with the exact same side lengths, but these are definitely not congruent because their angles are different. Okay, so we can certainly see that this angle is not identical to this one, so those two are not congruent figures. And then similarly with this second set, so instead of just all of the sides being the same, this one has four sets of sides the same. So this set of sides, okay, congruent to this set, so we can see that those are the same. And then this other set, okay, congruent to this set, okay, so we can see that those sets are the exact same. And again, not the same parallelograms. Okay, so definitely not congruent. Again, we can certainly see um, that this one definitely has an acute angle and an obtuse angle, and this one looks to have right angles. So um, what would happen in this second scenario where we've got two parallelograms and we have a certain set of sides equal, and we've got an angle equal. Would this guarantee that the um, two parallelograms are congruent? So go ahead and draw these two, tri uh, these two parallelograms, mark up the congruent parts, and see if you think that that means that the parallelograms would have to be congruent, and then come back to the video. All right, so let's take a look here. So I've drawn two parallelograms here. Let's mark up the diagram with the information that they told us. So they told us that AB is equal to EF. And then they also told us that um, BC is equal to FG. And then they told us that angle ABC, so ABC, is congruent to EFG. So is this going to be enough to prove that these two parallelograms are identical? So maybe you decided you couldn't come up with a counterexample. Okay, you couldn't show one where you set this angle and you didn't get congruent parallelograms, but maybe you didn't know exactly how to prove it. Um, and so if we kind of take a look here, we would, um, if we put in an auxiliary line or kind of a helper line here of a diagonal, we would be able to kind of reason that these two triangles up here, ABC and EFG, are the same through side angle side, right? And then in the properties of a parallelogram, this opposite angle would be equal. So B would be equal to D. That means F would be equal to H as well. 
opposite sides are congruent. So if AB is this length, then CD would be the same. So same with EF and HG would have to be identical. And then BC and AD, FG and EH would have to be identical. So we get another set of congruent triangles down here. So what this does is helps us to see that this angle would be the same as this angle, would be the same as this angle, would be the same as this angle. Okay, we would also then hopefully see that this angle here would be a corresponding part to this one because these triangles are congruent and then corresponding to this one and corresponding to this one. So what happened is we actually ended up with all the parts being identical because these angles end up being set. So these angles end up being set. So those opposite angles are equal. Okay, and then these opposite angles were equal. So we end up with two exactly congruent figures if that angle is between those two given sides. And in fact, even if, so if we took a look, let's move the, these down. What if that angle wasn't between those two sides? Okay, so if we were given... Um, this side to this side, this side to this side, and we were given the angle not between it, would we be able to um, reason here that these two parallelograms are congruent? So let's go ahead and put in another kind of auxiliary line here. I'm going to split it up because that's where the angle was. Now we started with that these are parallelograms, so opposite sides are going to be congruent. So we still know this side, which then gets us back to side angle side here in both of these um, split up triangles. Okay, so we have the opposite sides congruent. We also know opposite angles are congruent. So we get back to another set of triangles, four sets of triangles that are side angle side. So we would again be able to reason that these two angles are congruent to these two angles by corresponding parts of those congruent triangles, this one here, okay, which then forces these angles to be identical as well. So all the parts of those parallelograms are identical. So as long as you know two of the sides, okay, and then um, the angle between, or not between, just an angle, you should be able to reason that it's a um, that the parallelograms are congruent. All right, so you know how to prove points to points, segments are congruent, triangles are congruent, and now you know how to prove some quadrilaterals. So you use different theorems like side angle side, side side side, that kind of thing to prove the properties of special triangles and now also quadrilaterals that you've met along the way. So learning targets from this lesson was that you could use rigid transformation to prove quadrilaterals are congruent and write conjectures about um, quadrilateral congruence. And actually, I didn't necessarily use rigid transformations. I used triangle congruence, so I did um, kind of side angle side to each one. But if you are able to prove that triangles are congruent, so let's go back to this example here. If you're able to... Um, prove that two triangles are congruent, then there is definitely a rigid motion. So once this triangle, once we got this triangle congruent to this triangle, we know that there's a rigid motion that takes this one onto this one. So then there is a rigid motion that will move the rest of this over, is what that is getting at. Um, and then writing... Conjectures about quadrilateral congruence, so given two sides and an angle, that will be enough to prove the quadrilaterals are congruent. Okay, talked about that. And then here would be your cool down, so side-side rectangle congruent. So if we knew that two corresponding pairs of adjacent sides in a rectangle were congruent, would that be enough to prove that the rectangles are congruent? So remember that a rectangle by definition has 90 degree angles, okay? It's a parallelogram with all 90 degree angles. 
So we know in each of these that every angle here is 90 degrees and that they are both parallelograms. So if we had, um, if we knew that a pair of adjacent sides were congruent, okay, adjacent me meaning next to, so this one congruent to this one, and then the one next to it congruent as well, would that be enough to reason that the two um, rectangles are congruent to each other? So I would say yes. Okay, again, you could put in um, the diagonal here and say we've got side angle side, which would then get you a um, rigid motion that would take this one onto this one. Okay, and across from each other here, you've got those opposite sides congruent. So you could also talk about that this angle would be congruent to this one, which is here and here as well. I mean, we already know that these are 90 degree angles, so I'm not sure we even need to do the corresponding parts here. But then this angle and this angle congruent here. So you certainly have all of the sides and angles being congruent since this these are congruent. We already knew they were 90. So again, I don't think that that part is necessary, but all of the corresponding parts are equal then, which is the definition of congruent figures.